With the exception of Bob Marley and Peter Tosh, reggae music is not big business in Canada. Reggae albums don't sell a lot, even though we do have a couple of world-class acts right here in Toronto. A lot of the British new wave bands have been heavily influenced by reggae, and in a lot of cases, new wave bands and reggae bands share the same audiences. Now, that's an unusual situation here in Canada, but recently at the Heritage Centre in Toronto, there was a double bill featuring Johnny and the G-Rays and Leroy Sibbles. for the Heptones, and in Jamaica is as big a star as Tosh and Marley. He lives in Toronto now and is pursuing a solo career. With the success of reggae-based New Wave, there is a danger that real roots artists may be overlooked. We asked him how he feels about the music of New Wave acts like The Police. I love that, man. You know, because what they're doing is not totally reggae, right? You know, it's 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 uh, in between of their music and reggae. You know, it's what they can do to other music, and I love that. You know, because it's establishing what we've been trying to do for a long time. You know, it's, it helps a whole lot. But Olivia Grange Walker, who manages Leroy and other Toronto reggae acts, doesn't necessarily agree. The artists, they all see it that way, but you see, because I have to see further than that. You know, I'm able to assess what kind of problems we could run into. But you don't think it's um, maybe turning more people onto reggae music as a result? Yes, it is. But it's also giving the programmers an excuse not to play reggae. You find that uh, the media, or it's, I should say the radio stations, they are embracing new wave. And they also recognize that the people like reggae. And because there is some reggae in new wave, then they feel that justifies whatever the way they treat reggae, like they ignore reggae, but because it's a new wave, that's cool. Picture my grandfather, he is 69, and he's been working like hell, and for a long, long time, and now they recommend the pension. is about to sign a major recording contract, but it's been a long uphill struggle to gain international recognition. Films like The Harder They Come picture the Jamaican music industry in the early days of reggae, ripping off singers and musicians. I asked Leroy if that's what it was really like. That's, that was the idea of the whole thing, really, you know, to show really what goes on. And it's not just Jamaica, too, you know, it's an international thing. It happens with a lot of group that is famous now had been ripped, ripped off in the past, you know? Were the Heptones ever ripped off in that way? <laughs> 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 yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That, there was no uh, uh, exception, you know? You find that in the early days, because the artist wanted a chance to record, the th most important thing to him was to be able to go out there and sing and hear his voice and get praises, right? And you find that there were producers who were producing these artists and not paying them what they should be paid. They weren't being paid their copyright. They weren't being paid as artists. And um, some of the, the songs that they wrote were actually registered in the producers' names abroad. And, you know, they, they just wasn't getting what they should get. You've got to try and try, try and try, try. A man should try to make something of life Tried and true, all the stress and strife A man should know 
exactly where he wants to go. And let nothing stand in your way. You just can't sit down and watch the world go by. You've got to try, try and try. Cause everything you do, someone's out there. He's got his eyes on you. He's got his eyes on you, yeah. A man should know exactly where he wants to go. And let nothing stand in your way. You just can't sit down, no. And watch the world go by. You've got to try and try. Why do you think reggae has become so popular in the past few years? It's the art of the music. It's jam music, you know. Reggae music is heartbeat music. <laughs> like I say, all the time, you know. This is the music that it's been stifled. Like, this is the only music right now that I know that has been stifled so much. And yet, it's, it still goes over. And it's still getting over and have to go over. Oh, well, tomorrow is another work day. Whoa. And if you now go work, you now go get no pay, no. But if you feel your life is slipping away, whoa. hold on, hold on. For every dreamer got to follow his dream, yeah. And every leader got to follow that plan For everything is just a dream of one man One soul One heart One love Country boy You're never gonna find no peace in town Country girl you're never gonna find your way around. Come on, ho, ho. Come put your own food in the ground. Toronto is home to another major reggae talent, Ernie Smith. A household name in Jamaica, Ernie's song Tears on My Pillow was a million seller for Johnny Nash. JD asked Ernie about his frequent trips back to Jamaica. Well, in terms of, of, of a musical context, we need from time to time to keep going back to Jamaica, to keep refreshing ourselves with what is happening, you know. Um, in terms of a cultural identity, in terms of that kind of a search, um, there's a certain point spiritually at which you realize that, you know, that part of it, that material part of it, knowing what we are, what we do, what we play, what all of that, you know. People live all over the place, you know. People have been nomads for years, you know. And when that search is over, there's still a higher search, you know, which is a spiritual thing. When you were in Jamaica, you had quite a series of accomplishments, shall we say. You even outsold Bob Marley at one time. Yeah, well, the, you know, it was easy to do that. I can see why now, because the people who Bob Marley appealed to, the street people, didn't have the money to buy the records, you know. Bob Marley, Mar Marley had to come to the street people here to sell records, mm -hmm. you know, because the majority of the people in Jamaica just don't have it, you know. And in order to sell records, you had to deal with a certain approach to the music, which got to a certain sector of the you know, the working public. It, is it survival that made you look towards North America? Is it survival that makes any uh, reggae act look towards North America? We turn for all kinds of reasons. Um, survival is what you decide it is, you know. In terms of eating, musicians always eat in Jamaica. You know, we're, all, we're always, we're never, musicians are never hungry because people love musicians. <laughs> you know, but um, in terms of achieving anything on any kind of 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 of, of um, world class, you have got to go 
through this experience to see what it's all about, you know, in order to see yourself then, in order to be in Jamaica, because you have to operate out of Jamaica, but if you're going to live in Jamaica, you have to have a certain experience to see yourself in a world context. Ernie, this new album of yours, To Behold Ja, what sort of a, an accomplishment is that for you, musically and spiritually, so, shall we say? Spiritually, it's, um, it's a point to which I've arrived in, in a search towards the true realization of, of, of God and identity as being one. Carlene Davis, who's currently recording a cover version of The Harder They Come. On the international reggae scene, there are few female artists. Bob Marley's wife, Rita, is about to release an album here, but the market still has lots of room for other ladies trying to make it in a primarily male scene. Carlene, she is so reggae. Her background has been influenced by her, um, her schooling in England. She left Jamaica when she was 14. And she has done blues and folk, the works. And it's now fused with reggae, which is very, very strong. When did you rediscover your roots? Uh, leaving England, coming here. While I was in England, there would be the odd groups that uh, the steel bands that they'd need female vocalists every now and again, and I, that's when I had a chance to really do the uh, West Indian music. And then when I came here, I was still doing pop, rock, everything. And between that, I'd still get into the community here whenever they put on a show. You know, sometimes they'll have big acts from Jamaica coming up, like Toots and. Calypso Rose and I'll be the local artist with them, you know, on the shows. There usually aren't that many women involved in the, that kind of musical scene, it seems. Like there's so many reggae artists mm -hmm. that are superstars that are men, but we hardly hear about any women. Well, there are a lot in Jamaica, but they're not ex get, they don't get the exposure they deserve. That's Why, my opinion. That I really don't know, you know. Do you think it's especially hard because of the West Indian attitudes towards women? Well, that's a very touchy subject, but, you know, it's possible. I really couldn't say, or maybe they're not as aggressive as women outside of Jamaica, you know, I mean, I'm a Jamaican, but I, I've been abroad, and my attitude is a lot different from women in Jamaica. So well, what's the general attitude among Jamaican women? Um, they're more of the wifey kind of, you know, they're into that very much more than, say, I would be, because I've been out here, and I've had a chance to be on my own, and you sort of adapt, you know, to what's happening. How do you think the, the male uh, reggae artists regard you now? Or the, I know you're in close contact mm -hmm. with a lot of... Uh, I Jamaican think they, they respect you because for you to get up and do, try, and do what they're doing is like saying, 
you know, they, they can only, you know, uh, respect what you're doing because it is tough being a male or female in this business, you know. What do you attribute the uh, large success of reggae to? Just in the past couple of years, it seems that people are really starting to focus on reggae as a really special kind of music mm -hmm. and people are really getting into it, being influenced by it. Why do you think that is? I, um, I was reading the same article, it was Clarion newspaper with Leroy and uh, he said it's the times, and Ernie says the same thing, and, I, and I'm, I'm beginning to agree with them. It's just, it's a, it's a spiritual kind of rhythm um, with the drums and the bass. It's repetitive, it's sort of hypnotic in a way, right? And we all, we need something to get away from dealing with uh, reality. I mean, we can't escape it, but when we want to uh, relax maybe or just get a high then, reggae does that for you. You know, and I've heard so many people say that, you know. Are you a religious person? I don't know. That's a very difficult question. I do believe in a, in a, in a, in a super being, and there's an energy that takes me somewhere, you know. And if you call that religious, I guess that's what it is. I do believe that there's a God. And as far as my talent is concerned, I think I was given this talent to use it. I... Another interesting aspect of reggae is talk over. Leroy Sibbles brought a friend of his along to the studio to turn us on to this kind of rapping over music that was originated by Jamaican Sound Systems DJs in the early 70s. Leroy invited us to a Jamaican dance in the Jane Finch area where he and a bunch of his friends had a great time doing talk over all night long. Most of the reggae singles coming out of Jamaica right now are released with special music on the flip sides especially designed for talk over. It's called the dub version and it's basically the bass and drum tracks of the A side punctuated with the occasional guitar riff to make things interesting. <laughs> Come to the 